a death march with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, do you have a um, Nashville? Do you have, you sitting and everything in this, or what? Uh, you want to start? Um, we all sing the show. Not all of us, but uh, a lot of us. It revolves around country music and the the backdrop of of Nashville um, in its entirety, and its political side, and its um, personal side, and musical side. And and my character is this uh, new up and coming young country star and. She her her behavior is very questionable, but as you get to know her and where she comes from, you start to understand. Things start clicking for you. You start to understand where she comes from and why she behaves the way she behaves and who she truly and genuinely is as a person. We sing all the songs that we sing on the show are original songs. Um, yes, and I, I am also singing on the show, <laughs> which for me is a great adventure, um, but <laughs> that was part of what made the, the idea of doing this, this character really exciting, and working with T-Bone and Burnett is an actor's dream, and a musician's dream, really anybody's dream. If you ever get the opportunity, I really highly recommend it, work with T-Bone and Burnett. Um, and uh, I'm playing the queen of country music, and a woman who is self-made and has uh, really is sort of in her prime and, and kind of reached the pinnacle of her career and now is facing some real um, issues and conflict about changes in the music industry and what that means in her life and um, <laughs> and Hayden is catching flies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm busy doing in the meantime. Well Hayden, does it, does it help that to understand your character a little more that you you aren't a stranger to the world of celebrity. You kind of have seen what your character puts up with or is surrounded by. Does that happen? absolutely, absolutely? I think a, a lot of um, a lot of what you put into characters is is personal. It's it's things that you draw from personal experience, even if it's not something you've specifically gone through. You you try to draw that parallel somewhere. And she's something I have a lot, and someone I have a lot in common with. And even though I didn't grow up in the country music industry per se, it was still a I was still a young girl growing up in in the spotlight in in a similar enough industry that you 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 find a lot of parallels there. A lot when of you when you go to downtown, whether it's Ninth and Porter or Tootsie's or Legends or Bluebird or whatever, I mean, or Printer's Alley, when you go to these places and you see these guys that have been kicking around there for 20 years and never got the break, um, that kind of tells you a little bit about the pathos of, of country music. How much of that is they going to include into the show? Do you have any idea at this point? I, I, I bet we'll see a lot of that. You know, I, I think that the what I one of the things I love and find so interesting about the show is that the show is really it really is meant to be a slice of life of Nashville and um, I know Callie Corey who is our creator brilliant creator is is really dedicated to to showing all aspects all aspects of that and and so I think that we will probably see that the show and I remember having this conversation when Callie and I first talked about the show I said, what is it? What is it that is going to make this show different and really um, make it special to people and pull people in? And she said, it's about people trying to manifest their destinies. And I think that that has to mean that we're going to see people have success at that and we're going to see people fail at that and because that is the truth and the reality of that world. I've been it's kind of like Deacon's character a little bit though. You see Chip, Chip's character going through that mm -hmm. a little bit is even though he's been amazingly successful with Raina and, and as her lead guitarist he's never gotten to stretch his, his wings and and write songs that he wants to sing and, and you see him perform in the Bluebird a little bit in the pilot and he's amazingly talented. Um, so even though he's seen success in in one aspect, there's definitely longing to be successful in, in other aspects of it as well. There will be comparisons made to movies, I think. Uh, there's certainly, a, it has some of the tropes of Star is Born and All About Eve and 
showgirls even at, at one point. Do you do you see that, you guys, or, or or am I just making that up in my little mind? Well, I think you know. I always think everything is derivative to some degree, but um, I. I actually, with this show, I haven't really found something that I can easily compare it to. Um, certainly in terms of what the, att the intentions of the show are, um, I think, but, I, but again, you know, I can see all of the, they're all, they're going to always be little themes from various movies that we love or don't love, but uh, that will that will sneak in. But. Um, I, my experience thus far with the show is that it really is its own, its own animal. Hayden, what do you hope the audience sees uh, when they see this, hopefully from a different perspective of seeing you? Um, well, I hope they fall in love with this character. That is my, my goal, is that even though you see her as this, this very edgy young girl that is very difficult to like in the beginning, that you grow to respect her and understand her. Um, but one of the things that drew us so heavily to this is the how intricate these characters are, how complex these characters are, how this is a character that I've never gotten a chance to play before. And I knew doing Heroes that as much as I loved Heroes and ha as much as that was an amazing, uh, unforgettable experience for me, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle to a certain degree to be seen as anything else for a little while as an actor. Um, and this is something where I really feel like I can, I can push myself to the, to the limit and, and see what I'm, I'm capable of doing. Peyton, when did you find your authentic voice? When did you find out the voice that you're meant to sing with? I don't know that I have yet. I think it's a constant, um, it's a constant work in progress and something that I found, and maybe it's because of my background in, in acting and grow up, growing up doing that and constantly portraying people other than myself, you get lost in it sometimes. And I found that even with songs, you know, we get these songs and, and, and you sing these songs on the radios, radio, and I find myself mimicking the way that other people are doing it as opposed to putting my own you know, spin on it, and and it's definitely been an interesting journey finding myself. And th I think this is going to be it. This is this is going to be where I really have to create something new and find my own voice within it. Connie, Connie? Uh, when, when you're when you're approaching a song, um, how do you know when to be tender and when to be tough? <laughs> That's a great question, especially considering the fact that I'm still really just learning how to approach a song. Um, and I think uh, what I've experienced so far in, in figuring out how to do that is that um, I really try to let the music guide me. The thing that's so wonderful about working with music is that it has its own, it has its own movement and its own rhythm its own vibe, you know, and so I, I try to hear, feel that and then hear what the story is that's being told. And then, you know, as Hayden was talking about finding a voice, you know, then it's just really about trusting however that comes through in, with my voice. <laughs> you just you adopted a, a son, mm -hmm. so how hard of a choice, because an hour-long show is a lot of work, how, how hard of a choice was it, even if it's an amazing script like this is? To, to choose that, to balance the Really them. hard. It was a very hard choice. And I'm not going to say that I haven't shed a lot of tears about it, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I know that, that they're, they are being very sensitive. The, the, you know, Callie and all the people who are running the show are very sensitive to that situation. And, and um, you know, I just... And you know, even my dear friends were, you know, saying this is this is the time in my son's life when he is actually pretty malleable, and it's easy to just pick him up and take him wherever we're going. And you know, the great thing about being one of the great things about being an actor is that you can bring your children to set, and um, he will be at set with us every day. And um, 
you know, I'm just gonna, I'm a working mom. I'm a single working mom, so we're gonna do what we gotta do. And uh, I've ultimately always believed that uh, parents who are challenging themselves and, um, per, you know, living the lives that they're meant to be living are always better parents. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm counting on that. Last question. Hayden, well, Hayden was starting out so young. I just wonder, uh, this is almost hand in hand with the authentic voice. There must have been a time when you realized, I get it, I know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm not, I'm not being relied on as, as a child actor any longer. I'm not a, an adolescent any longer. I'm an actress. When did it happen? Once again, I'm not quite sure that it has happened yet. You know, um, they wouldn't have booked you for this gig if it, if it hadn't happened. Uh, well, not necessarily, because that is part of this character that I'm playing. That's something that I can relate to, something that she's going through as well. And, and I do remember, though, getting to the point where I finally dawned on me that this is something that I could be unsuccessful at. I've done it my entire life. It's it's was my every day. It's something that I never doubted. I never even thought about it. And then I got to a point where I was no longer being given the forgiveness of being a child actress. That it was expectations all of a sudden and expectations that I had to figure out and and handle and a pressure that I had never experienced before and and those those relentless thoughts you know seeping into your mind of it becoming a truth that it could potentially not work out and this is something that I spent my entire life doing and nothing else and I would know nothing else um, so it's it's day by day and I, I will say that this show gave me a new sense of um, empowerment as an actor and and something to be excited about because uh, because I, I didn't do a whole lot for a while and um, that that did make this even more exciting though. Connie real quick uh, Friday Night Lights followed by American Horror Story followed by Nashville what kind of appeal to the devil did you make? I know I'm really and it's funny when I just heard Hayden say like it, it just occurred to her that maybe she wasn't gonna be successful at this I thought I still think that someday. No, I, I do. <laughs> but yeah, yet, you know, absolutely. I, um, but I, I have been incredibly fortunate, and, and I think that um, the key for me has always been working with people who I really admire and really feel like I'm going to be able to collaborate with, because I love collaboration, and it's my favorite part of the artistic process, and, and um, you know, when you can get that right, boy, you can really, you can really do great things. So I'm hoping this, that's going to be true for us with this show as well. Right, three Thanks home runs. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Marco. Yeah.